Sherry's the first one to stand up. Then we got Dana. Uh-oh, Vicky. Christy. Shirley and Kay. Oh, Blake, Danny, Connie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Life Spring Church. If we could follow everyone's lead and just stand this morning, we want to say welcome home. We're glad that you could uh, spend your Sunday morning with us. If you're uh, if you're with us online, uh, we're we're happy that you're tuning in in one way or another. Let's pray this morning to begin the service. Father, we come to you this morning, Lord. We thank you. We give you the praise and the glory for who you are, God. We just pray that you, Lord, we invite you, knowing that you're already here, Father. We just invite you to to touch our hearts today, Lord, and help us to be open to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
isn't created It's buried alone I hear your invitation To let it all go And I see it now I'm laying it down And I know that I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I'll run to the Father again And again and again Yeah.
on and I know it's not true because he never comes at you with the truth <laughs> um, it's just kind of feeling alone not have wanting somebody that I can sit and talk through things with that really gets it you know Rex really got me it was a miracle that he really got me <laughs> and I felt like I was losing my mind anybody else ever been there you jump down that rabbit hole and before you know it you're in a place where you don't want to be where you know you don't need to be mentally, emotionally so what I did is I went to my piano and I ran to the Father just like we just sang it out I ran to the Father and while my situation didn't change and I haven't got an answer to the prayer that I've been praying for seems like for years and it just continues to tear my heart out God met me there and my situation hasn't changed but God's presence in me for that situation has changed when we invite the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords into our struggles, into our weaknesses, into the things that we don't understand, the things that seem unfair, God's presence makes the difference. It fills in all those gaps, fills in all those holes, and the answers that I was once seeking his presence covered those. I want to challenge you today. Some of you have reached out to me this week for prayer. And I'm praying for you. But I want to challenge you with those requests to keep them in the presence of God. Those things are bigger than we are. They're things that we can't change. God knows I've tried. But God's presence makes all the difference. So I want to challenge you today as we continue to worship. Continue to worship, even in spite of struggles, even in spite of hard things, even in times of unknown, even in times of weakness. God's presence makes the difference. Worship in any ways, church. will bow down and say you are God every knee will bow and every man will bow down and say you are King <laughs> so let's just start right now why would we wait sing it out 
voice one more time. Just want to spend a little more time in your presence, Lord. You make all things new. You make all things new. We seek your face today, Jesus. We want your heart in this place, Jesus. Come and have it, the praises of your people. We hunger and thirst for you, Jesus. Fill us up, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Of our best praise, of our best worship. script here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Can I just say one more thing? Who needs more of Jesus today? going on in their lives that are bigger than they are. Who is tired of praying for the same thing without an answer? Anybody else but me? I feel God's presence here so strongly. I also feel some resistance. And I don't think God's done yet. I don't think God's done yet. Merv, Darlene, Robert, Danielle, Maddie, Doyle. Who needs just an impartation? of God's presence in the middle of your situation. I want you to come forward. Come on, church. Don't be shy. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's no shame in God's presence. There's no guilt in God's presence. If God is speaking to your heart right now, this could be your moment, church. This could be your moment. This could be your Kairos time that God has ordained your miracle to happen. Don't miss it. Uh, Shirley and Kay, can y'all come up and help pray as well? In His presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. In church, there's nothing that's impossible for Him. And whenever we get into His presence... 
and we stir up his presence here in this place today God his gifts become so evident and become so strong come on church let's pray with these people today let's call upon the name of the Lord oh we thank you Lord thank you Lord for your presence we need you Father we need you Father come on let's pray let's stay in this atmosphere their miracle let's pray for their miracle today pray for my miracle today God we need you we invite you in this place Jesus holy are you Lord thank you God King of glory fill this place we just want to be with you we just want to be with you
Jesus until you come again. I will sing hallelujah until you come again. And I'll dance in your presence until you come again. Sing hallelujah until you come again. And I'll dance in your presence until you come again. Sing it out, church. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. in your presence until you come again we will sing we will sing we will sing hallelujah until you come again declare in church and we'll dance in your presence we'll dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence unless you buy the stuff that's got all the ingredients already together. You put all those ingredients out before you. Anybody just want to sit and eat a bowl of salt? No. Anybody want to sit and eat a couple cups of flour? No. Nobody wants to do that. But whenever you mix it all together, boy, is it good. Right? And that's what God is doing with our lives. He puts a little bit of the bitter and a little bit of the sour with the stuff that tastes really good. And he makes something beautiful out of it. I want you to remember this day because I'm going to remember this day as the day that something shifted in the spirit. Greet someone around you this morning as you're being seated.
have written down are no are no comparison to what's going on right here. Amy apologized for that. No, don't 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 you? No, God has no. spoken to you. It's not my time. That. It's not my time. Thank you for your heart and being open. <laughs> I was even going to open with a joke and all kinds of stuff. Like, nope. <laughs> we're just going to go right into the Word. And today, today we're talking about we're talking about patience, patience in the moments. We love. We, so I can say we love. Sometimes we hate being patient for God. I love this. Sorry. We're going to be patient <laughs> today. Let them continue in prayer. We can let them pray. Stretch forth your hands right now. God, we thank you. We thank you for this moment that you made here today. I don't know if anyone else felt it, but I could feel it sitting on the front right here. I started shaking, and I knew that it was you, Lord God. We thank you for that. We thank you that you showed up here to change people's lives. And that we were, we were here to see it, Lord God. We thank you that you poured out your spirit on us today. Your Holy Spirit, Lord God. And we thank you for the changes that will be made today to glorify you, Lord God. We thank you the hearts that were broken today to, to, to lift you up, Lord God. I pray that the walls that we've built up in our lives were broken today. And that you were, were filling that space, Lord God. We thank you for that, that we are set free from any bondage, any hate, any addiction today, Lord God. It was set free today in this moment because your Holy Spirit filled those places, Lord God. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray that you continue to work in our lives. You continue to pour out your blessings over us, your spirit over us, Lord God. We pray for the fruit of the Spirit today, love, peace, joy, patience, Lord God. We pray for all of those throughout our lives, Lord God. Continue to thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't even know where to go from there. <laughs> I'm supposed to be speaking on patience. And, and we're just going to go with it. Today we're, today we're talking about patience. And the Hebrew word for patience is, is sablanut. I think I said that right. I looked up the pronunciation, so it was something to, something to that extent. But it's not as cool as like last week when I when I when I spoke about peace, and it and you had this re really cool definition. This means exactly like patience. <laughs> it literally, it's it's wait quietly, or face rejections, or bear with self-control. That's patience. To bear something with self-control, to endure, to bear. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. So when we think about different things, we think about, sometimes we think about like the disciples and the fruit of the Spirit going over their lives. Sometimes they were pretty impatient. And when we think about James and John, they, we're going to talk about how they were the sons of thunder and how they got the, that name. We're going to find it in Luke chapter 9, verse 51. It says, As the, as the time drew near, for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out to, for Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead to, Samar to the Samarian village to prepare for his arrival. But the people of the village did not welcome Jesus because he was on his way to Jerusalem. So they said, no, 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 we don't want you here. What did James and John do? Uh-uh. When James and John saw this, they said, Jesus, Lord, should we call down fire from heaven and burn them up? They were impatient. They said, no, no, no. We don't want to give them salvation. We want to bring down fire on them. Bring down fire. How many of you ever been there in traffic when someone just, just makes you mad? Lord, I don't know where they're going or what they're doing, but send them in a wreck. <laughs> delay their thing. They delayed mine. No. We've got to have patience in that moment. And what does Jesus do when they said, let's call down fire? So, so Jesus turned and rebuked them. He rebuked James and John in that moment. So they went on to another village. They said, okay, this is not where 
we're supposed to be. They don't want us here. We're going to go to the next village. We're going to go speak in the next village. <clears throat> get into second peter right here it says the lord isn't really being slow about his promises as some people think no he is being patient for your sake he does not want anyone to be destroyed but wants everyone to repent so he's just waiting for that moment of repentance so be patient god has an, a, a, an eternity that he's working with we think of things in our lifetime and these moments, but in the, in, the, in the full scope of things, God has it worked out through eternity. So when we think years is a long time, that's a moment for God. So be patient. God has got this. He is waiting for that sake. He's waiting for the repentance. <clears throat> in Psalms, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the muck and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. I never, I never caught that before. That he picked me up, he set me down, and then he steadied me to get me back on my feet. And I just, that hit me in a different way this time. It's, it's not just picking me up and saving me out of it and... Okay, he pulled me out of quicksand and then put me down. No, he picked me up, he put me back on my feet, and he steadied me until I got my feet underneath me. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. So I have to tell you one, one of the stories about being patient in my life and how I failed at it. I come home, so in our household, we, uh, whoever gets home first cooks dinner. It's kind of just a, a rule of thumb. I had worked late one day, probably 12 hour day, whatever. It was you know, probably six, seven o'clock at night. And I text Danielle, hey, I'll be home at seven o'clock. And I walk in expecting dinner to be ready, right? <laughs> And it, it was not. And so what do I do? I just got quite upset. I started throwing pots and pans around, and I was cooking dinner. I just got mad. I was not patient. She was expecting me to come in, take a shower, and then she was going to prepare food. But I was not patient enough. And it was not good. We went to bed at separate times that night. <laughs> we still slept in the same bed. But she went straight to bed as I was still preparing my dinner, banging pots and pans around, throwing stuff around. I was not patient in that moment. And I had to repent for that. Proverbs 14 says, there's a path before each person that seems right, but ends in death. <laughs> had I continued down that path, I probably would not be standing up here because she might have killed me. <laughs> but... I had, to, I had to repent for that. That was something, I was not patient in that moment. She was, she was expecting one thing, and I was expecting something else. I had to have patience. <clears throat> and then Ecclesiastes. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. Control your temper, for anger labels you a fool. I look like an idiot in there banging pots and pans around. <laughs> I never do that. I come in there and I'll, I'll cook and I enjoy cooking. So I was, no, I was not enjoying that cooking. I was mad and I was letting her know it. <laughs> and she knew it because she just got up and left. Just didn't even say nothing. She just went right to the bedroom. <laughs> but today, it's patience. True patience is, is from God. And we can't think of in our timeline in life for patience. You know, think of moments when we have to be patient, self-control, uh, wait, waiting quietly sometimes. Sometimes just waiting quietly in those patience moments. But we have to trust in God. We have to trust God's timing. God's timing is not our timing. And thank God it's not. Because we would miss out on so many other blessings. When we want it now, 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 now when God's got something so much bigger for us. <clears throat> Tr 
trust in God's timing. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Seek God in those moments of, of, of frustration. Seek God in those moments of unsure. Seek God, and he will show you the path to take. When you're unsure of which way to go, just wait for God. He'll show you a path. I've been in life, my part of my life when I was, I, I want to go this way, and I have to go this way. I've tried to go in business with people I shouldn't have gone business with. And said, this is, the, this is where God wants me. No, it wasn't. Because I just, it was what I wanted. It wasn't ready for. And it failed. So seek what God is. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. When you're waiting in those moments, when you're downtrodden, when you're depressed, when you're like, God, you're not here. God, where are you? God, I need you. We'll find new strength. You will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Trust in the Lord in those moments of patience. Doyle was telling me that he had moments of impatience when he was expecting someone to turn into a spot that he needed to go and they were trying to wait on him to turn so that he could go, they could go into the spot that he was blocking and they were both standing there and he's like, come on! And he, then he realized he was the problem and he's like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so he was telling me this today. So I was like, that's good. That's good in a moment when he should have had the, just a moment of patience. Wait, what's going on with their lives? What's going on with them? Do I need to be patient for them? Sometimes you don't know what anyone else is going through in their lives. And you have to, sometimes you just have to be, have grace and have patience with people in those moments. <clears throat> Number two, commit to God. Commit to, commit your actions. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. They will succeed. Commit your actions Everything you do, commit it to Christ. Commit, commit it to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. Amy, today, commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. They will. Romans 12, 2, 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable this is truly a way to worship him. <clears throat> living sacrifice. A living and holy sacrifice before God. Just in that moment, commit to God. Total and co complete commitment. And it gives you that patience. These, the fruit of the Spirit work together. When you have love, you'll have more peace. When you have joy, you'll have more patience. They all work together in glorifying God. And it will make your life this holy and complete living sacrifice to God. It's, it's, it's not just one individual thing. It's all of them working together. And it's so awesome to see. And truly, when someone has the fruit of the Spirit on them, it, you can see it. Like I said last week with the fruit coming off of trees, you can see when someone's blossoming and blooming, when those fruit trees have apples, when they have pears flowing off of them. You can see it in Christians' lives when they truly have the love of God and the fruits of the Spirit coming out of them. Romans 12, 12. It says, Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Have confidence and have hope. God's going to make this right. God's going to do what he's going to do. God's going to make this right. Be patient in the troubles. When you're going through the troubles, be patient. But don't stop praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. <clears throat> uh, musicians, y'all want to go ahead and come forward? I, hey, we still got announcements, but I don't, we're going we're gonna to get through this. I'm going to... So Hebrews, so learn what God wants for your life. Number three, when you learn where you're going, it's a lot easier to get there. <clears throat> Our great desire is that you will, you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, 
you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. How many of you have seen old Christians who've kind of gotten dull in their faith? They just, they just kind of like, I, I'm saved, I'm going to church, or they just go to church, and they just, they just don't have that life in them anymore. And it shows up. Don't get that way. It says, then, then, we'll, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises. Keep that love and that joy and that peace in your life. Those fruits of the Spirit. And it says in James 5, Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmer who patiently waits for the rains in the fall and the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable for the, for the valuable harvest to ripen they can they wait they continue to wait and see what God is doing that corn doesn't doesn't blossom overnight but then all of a sudden bam it's there so wait wait upon the Lord have patience for God Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 8 Danny you want to sing this one I'll just mess it with you. <laughs> it says, For everything there is a season. Oh, yeah. A time for every action under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. <clears throat> A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. There is moments in life where we're going to have to have patience. But there's going to be moments where we're going to have to stand up and speak. So have patience. Wait for God in those moments. Commit your life to God. Commit your actions to God. But be patient in those moments. When we have troubles. When we have those moments of doubt. Wait on the Lord. Put your actions under the Lord. And, it, and just understand that God has the patience. He's, his, his plan is always for the positive. His plan is always for the good. If we want to stand up, we want to have a moment. The band's going to sing a song. If you've been going through something today, and you've been waiting, I want to pray for you. If you've been waiting for that prodigal child to come back, if you've been waiting for, for a friend who's been on drugs or something, I want you to come forward and stand. And they're in their place for them. <clears throat> I want you to have patience in that moment. Continue to pray for them. Continue to show your love for them. Continue to, to know that God has a plan for their lives. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. They will succeed. Don't have doubts. Don't have don't have continued doubt. You can have moments of doubt, but put it in the Lord's hands. Trust in the Lord. As the band plays more song, I'm going to pray over you. I want to, I want to have a moment. Y'all all want to come forward or whatever. We're just going to have this moment. Shake it because I know God is here. Thank you.
God serving the Lord, God desires it even more. So you, with your eyes of faith, see that loved one bowing and surrendering their heart to Jesus, surrendering their lives to Jesus, because God doesn't lie. The world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you are King. We'll sow the seeds for that now. So let's start right now. to be prayed with this morning. We don't want to leave anyone out.
that Verizon commercial right there. Can you hear me now? Um, Amy, you're such a blessing today. Thank you uh, for what you shared. Thank you for that. And how much of us need more patience? Um, someone says the word patience, they look at me, they start laughing. So it's definitely an area for me to work on. I'm going to keep it short because we're already a little, little over our time. We have some announcements here. And while we're doing announcements, you guys can all sit down if you want. Um, I'd like to have the ushers go ahead and come forward. And I want to I wanna pray over our tithes um, while they're doing that. And then we'll go into the announcements shortly following that. Dear God in heaven, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for the blessings you've given to us. Thank you for being a part of our lives. Please bless the, the tithes that are coming in and the people who are giving of the, the blessings you've given to them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So some of the announcements, we just have three of them. On July 5th is Merge. They're meeting, uh, doing burgers and booms. So BYOB and B standing for booms on that one. Because um, when I was thinking about BYOB, I was thinking about something else. So we'll go, we'll go with the booms there. July 14th, what's that? Uh, July 14th, we're having baptism immediately following service. So if anybody here is wanting to be baptized or wanting to invite someone to know Jesus, to know what baptism means, to want to come talk to one of us, invite them up to us, that can happen. But that's happening on July 14th. And then on July 21st, we're having a next step immediately following service. And that's an opportunity to get to know staff, kind of get to know what we're doing here within Life Street Church, what our plans are. Uh, so we have that uh, happening on July 14th. And uh, 21st. I'm sorry, July 21st. I had a book up here with my funny looking glasses, so you're all going to get to make fun of me. I don't have them, so I'm struggling to read some of this stuff on the, on the paper. Uh, but I love you guys. Uh, you're dismissed, but feel free to stay behind. And uh, All right. So here's me. And my goofy glasses. Uh, Tomoko yesterday said I look like a big nerd. And um, I guess I am, so I'll take it. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, hope you enjoy your week, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye.